Monica! Los Angeles, 2001. Four cars line up for an illegal street race with hundreds in attendance. Behind the wheel of a highly modified red and yellow Acura Integra is Edwin, portrayed by literal rap god Ja Rule. It's murder! The race begins. Engines roar, tires squeal. Ja Rule does his best to pilot his ride to victory, but comes up short. Monica! Despite the loss, the bright little Integra became a legend and is now perhaps the most famous Integra in the entire world. But how did it make it on screen? Who built it? Well, I'm gonna tell you all about it. It's time to go splitter to spoiler, red to yellow, bumper to bumper on Jaw Rules Acura Integra from the frickin' The Fast and the Furious. Monica! This episode of Bumper to Bumper is sponsored by Acura and we couldn't think of a better car to feature than this legendary sport compact. I know you're frothing at the mouth to hear about this car, but to really understand it, we have to go back to the mid 70s. American cars back then sucked and they couldn't compete with more affordable Japanese cars. Detroit was hurting. United Auto Worker leadership went to Japan and asked the automakers to voluntarily limit the amount of cars they exported into the US. In the meantime, Honda still had to make money and decided to build fancier cars for a higher profit margin. They launched a luxury brand called Acura. Japan's other automakers followed suit. Toyota had a baby called Lexus and Nissan birthed the Infiniti. The Integra was born in 1985, same as me. It was a sporty yet cushy compact car. Thanks to double wishbone suspension and eventually a VTEC engine, the Integra quickly became a driver's favorite. A joy to drive. With the Integra's status as underground tuning legend, it made perfect sense for it to be included in the Fast and the Furious. The film's producers knew that this car was loved by the movie's core demographic, young people who liked cars. But when they found this car, they noticed something strange. This Integra was not built by a young person. It was built by a 60-year-old banker. What? Bill Cole was an old dude who took copious notes on everything he did. He also loved cars and building them. In the mid-90s, Bill Cole met up with Bill Newman of New Speed. You ever heard of it? Cole had a proposition. How's about I build a sweet sports car with your parts and you get a sweet sports car for your booth at SEMA? And Newman was like, hey, that sounds like a great idea. Win-win, let's do it. And the hunt was on for the right car. Cole wanted a badass sports car that was also reasonably priced and figured that the Integra GSR was the perfect choice. After all, it was the fastest car in the Honda family, you know, besides the NSX. New Speed hooked it up with a complete suspension overhaul. AEM handled the electronics and Momo covered the interior. To make sure the Integra sounded as good on the inside as it did on the outside, Polk Audio supplied a full sound system. And when the car was done, everything that could have been modified was modified. It was the epitome of 90s tuner culture and was a mainstay at New Speed's SEMA booth for years. So it was only fitting that when Bill showed up to the casting call for Redline, AKA the Fast and Furious, it's called a working title, director Rob Cohen loved the car. He was surprised though that Bill was a 60 year old man and not a teenager. But honestly, Rob, no teenager could ever afford to build a car like this, except for maybe Tanner Fox. These paint jobs are frankly caricatures of what the producers thought young street racers would have on their rides, but the Integra is a little different. First of all, it's got a real racing number plate on it. 12 wasn't chosen by accident. That number belonged to Randy Popes, who won the 1996 North American Touring Car Championship in a yellow Honda Accord sponsored by New Speed. 
When it came to the color scheme, it was pretty easy because New Speed, AEM, and Momo all use red and yellow motifs in their logos. It's kismet, there's no accidents. We're all just stardust, you know? The Wings West body kit and white Momo racing wheels top off the exterior and make this Integra the hottest on the planet. No wonder the producers didn't change anything on it when they cast the car. This Integra is what's known in the biz as a hero car or a principal car. These are the ones that have all the mods and are shot up close, usually with actors in them. Most of the stunt driving is done with stunt cars, which look the same on the outside, but have none of the expensive mods underneath. Supposedly, there were four stunt doubles based off of this Integra. One of them is living in a car museum somewhere, and the others were probably crushed. Now this was a show car, so the engine bay is just as pretty as the exterior because it's not just what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside that really counts. Even for big Hollywood actors like this Integra and me. But don't think for a second that the engine's just been dressed up. The GSR came equipped with the legendary B18 C1 VTEC engine. It makes sounds like this. VTEC engines can change their cam profile on the fly, which unlocks more power as the revs get higher. But this engine ain't stuck. It's got an AM cold air intake, which feeds air into the overboard throttle body. That's a more power, baby. On top of that, it's got a Type R intake cam for even more power, baby. Exhaust leaves through a DC sports headers and exhaust system. That's a name I haven't heard in a while. While power goes to the front wheels through an Exeti clutch and a lightweight flywheel. Pretty much everything that this car rides on has been modified with sweet, sweet period correct parts. It's got Coney adjustable shocks and new speed lowering springs for that perfect sport compact ride height. Everything that ties the wheels to the car has been swapped out too. Sway bars, end links, bushings, a camber adjustment kit, steel brake lines, and four piston AEM brakes. Even though this thing never saw the racetrack, Bill Cole made good on his promise to build a sweet sports car. With all of these mods, you would 100% be the king of autocross in 2001. And now for the reason we came, VTEC. <laughs> Menage! Just sitting in this car, I feel like it's 2001. I am Ja Rule. I need a denim jacket and a paisley headband. This is as close to being in the Fast and the Furious as I will ever be. As for any future ones, I am available and I have credits if you are currently one of the producers or involved in the casting of Fast 9 or 10, hit us up at info.donut.medium. <laughs> These new speed belts hold you into the Momo NASCAR seats and these Momo belt covers make sure things stay comfortable. On the dash is a signature from Ja Rule himself. Pain is love, writes Ja. And Ja knows about pain. He passed up on being in the second movie because he thought his rap career was about to really take off. So they cast Ludacris instead. That's actually what happened. My favorite part of the interior is something we've never featured on Bumper to Bumper the sound system. Now you kiddos might not know because car audio is really good now, but banging speakers used to be an essential mod. Now this baby's got the creme de la creme of 1999. A Sony C7050 stereo, compact disc player, MTX, 280 watt amp, Polk Momo MM455 front speaker set, Polk DX6 rear speakers, and a 10 inch sub. It's been a while since I've heard a system like this, and I think you guys need to hear it too. So so, without further ado, let's see what 1999 sounds like. Bill 
Nicole sold the Integra shortly after the release of the Fast and the Furious. The current owner, Gabriel Tremblay, found the car almost by accident late one night on eBay. You guys all know how that goes. <laughs> He's looking for a DC2 Type R, but couldn't pass up the chance to own this piece of history. After securing the car, he wanted to verify that it was indeed the one on the screen. So he tracked down Eddie Paul, the guy who built the stunt cars for the film. Eddie let Gabriel in on a secret document called the key car list. This ledger has all the VIN numbers and locations of the Fast and the Furious hero cars. Every owner of a real Fast and Furious hero car has this list. Obviously, they keep the contents of this list secret, otherwise unscrupulous people would spoof the VINs and build fake hero cars. Makes sense. The list verified that this Integra was indeed the real thing. The attention to detail Bill Cole put into this build elevates it above other sport compacts of the era. I'm so glad the people who owned the car after him have chosen to preserve it because they didn't have to. After all, this thing is barely in the movie. But what it lacks in screen time, it makes up for with a great story and a lasting legacy. This Integra embodies Acura's dominance of the sport compact game in the 90s. You take this thing anywhere in the country and people are gonna say, Monica! I wanna thank Acura for making this episode possible. Look for more fun stuff with us and Acura in the future. Let us know in the comments what other Acuras you wanna see episodes of Bumper to Bumper or Up to Speed on. I love you. I used to think forever I thought he was saying, Danas, yeah! <laughs> what do you say, menage?